first match, yes. the British Bulldogs versus the fabulous Rougeaus. Mm. They're really good here, I think, the Rougeaus. And the- Jacques Raymond and David Boy Smith and Dynamite Kid. Yes. Wake up, Tommy! <laughs> <laughs> wake up, Tommy. Tommy, wake, wake up. up. Um, the Rougeaus have been around for a couple of years. Mm. They were French Canadians and just that nobody was into them. Right. They were really yeah. apathetic of responses to them. So Vincent Mann said, why don't you become bad? And the easy way to become bad was they changed their theme tune to a song called All American Boys. That they sing, All American Boys. <laughs> and they have tiny, tiny little flags. Tiny flags. Ooh, too small. <laughs> and they wave them and people hate it. I think it's a really funny that thing. That flag needs to be bigger, you <laughs> dick. At what level? You saw of go, you're mocking us. <laughs> you don't want to be us. You want to mock us. <laughs> uh, a magic thing. Oh, look at this. It's the fabulous Russo. Let's go down to our ring announcer, Howard Finkel. So they get booed for being foreign, at which point out come the British Bulldogs, uh, who are, yeah. I mean, they are... An occupying force at times. Was... <laughs> they are the so pumped up on the gas and the juice and the roids here. They are much, much bigger <laughs> than they should be. They are mm. like Stay Puffed Marshmallow Men, but just yeah. uh, amazing. We're sort of like Dynamite's too big, yeah. and but you don't really notice because Davey Boy Smith is much too big. Much too big, much too big. And they are uh, so over with this crowd, especially yeah. Dynamite. Dynamite Kid. One of those slight bits of revisionism where people will sort of say it's the Bulldogs mm. and, you know, Davy Boy was always the star. I think that's more mm. of a WWE myth rather than one that wrestling fans think. Right. But Dynamite in this is so over with the crowd. And the thing that they mm. like about him is all the things that made him absolutely terrifying in real life, which is he is so explosive, he is so quick, and he's just so violent. The, the moment yeah. that he comes in, he tears into Raymond at one point, And the crowd just, they're up on their feet, just really like, yeah, rip into <laughs> fucking shreds. They like, really excited. <laughs> excited by it. Oh, no question about it, brother. That's the ultimate. That's your ultimate goal, tag team wrestling. Nice. Give a listen. Beautiful leapfrog. Oh, look at that maneuver. Dynamite put the brakes on and really clobbered it. The Rougeaus were pretty much on the upswing here. Mm. The Bulldogs are on the way down. And the Bulldogs were originally slated to lose this match. But Dynamite Kid went and argued, saying, no, we don't, we don't want to lose it. He really, really didn't like the Rougeaus. And they have this match, and it's fucking brilliant. I thought the timing of the thing was a bit weird for an opening match. Yeah, well, this was because the Bulldogs refused to lose. Uh... So they, they agreed to do a draw, which, again, I mean, draws are so seldom in mm. wrestling that when they happen, you go, well, this is weird. This feels really yeah, strange. especially for an opener as well. Yeah, just... but Dynamite Kid in this is just... He looks like thunder. Yeah. And he hated the Rougeaus. There was something he just took an instant dislike to them. He thought they were arrogant. He, you know, I mean, he was just mad. Is he, is he really playing into the, the whole kiffy? Like, yeah. Oh, no. Ooh, go dare they. <laughs> yeah. Look, at, look, look at them with their little flags. <laughs> you know. He's, anyway, what happens here is they have this <laughs> astonishing match, and it really is the crowd explode on this. Mm. The Bulldogs, when they were good, I think this might be their best pay per view match. I mm. mean, they are really badly represented in WrestleManias, where right. they, there's they're in some six-man matches that are crap, and they have a good WrestleMania 2 match, but it's against the Dream Team, Greg Valentine and Brutus Beefcake. Yeah, okay. So it's just, they don't have a great match, and this match is phenomenally good. Mm. And you can actually tell that there's a sort of bit of a genuine dislike. Um, Matilda's not interested. The dog. Nope, not She's at not all. even looking. At, how do they keep her so quiet? <laughs> I'm, making you, you a, I'm making a frowny you face. don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> get her out the freezer. It's time to go in. <laughs> <laughs> Just like he did with Jake's snake. snake. <laughs> get out of the mini bar now. It's not it's not the cold, it's the lack of air. It calms him down. <laughs> um, but Superstar Billy Graham at this just says, uh, take it back to the locker room, finish it in the showers if you have to. Yeah, I wrote this down too. <laughs> right, you're already in the lockers, locker room, have the fight there. Why you got to get in the shower? <laughs> <laughs> well, the reality is, uh, Superstar Billy Graham is doing this as a bit of fun. This is exactly what happened. Oh, what? So over the next couple of months, the Bulldogs and the Rougeos become a huge program. Right. Only it's just behind the scenes. These are the kind of teams, gentlemen, you're going to have to meet and defeat to make your way to the top. Me and Gene, we just have one thing to say to the people in the United States. As we know right now, the British Bulldogs are the best team and we respect them. We love the British Bulldogs. The mm. reason for that, Pete, is a classic wrestling story. Are you ready to hear about it? <laughs> I would like to it hear about it. It starts, Pete, with ribs. Ribs are all Oops. fucking witless. They are mean, practical <laughs> jokes that are basically a wrestler will come in, cause you either damage or pain or a massive loss yeah. of money. And when you go, what the fuck? They go, it's a fucking rib, you twat. In stop, a rib. Stop and you have crying. to take it. Why aren't you laughing? 
And then you have to go, ha, 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 ha. and they go, you fucking can't take a rib. They are awful. Now, the Bulldogs were famous for ribs. And I think there is something right. about the Bulldogs, which is always hanging over it when you talk about the Bulldogs, is I think Dynamite is an exceptionally cruel and not very bright man. And I think Davy Boy Smith, God bless him, was thick as fucking mints. And between the two of them, Dynamite is this horrible, mean bully. And Davy Boy Smith is this galumphing, sort of like semi-literate, henchman <laughs> who is standing behind going yeah do it uh, uh, uh. right um, Jimmy Hart in his autobiography talks about the Bulldogs he says the British Bulldogs had a reign of terror backstage they'd put itching powder in your street clothes in the middle of winter they might take a pair of scissors to your pants they'd padlock your suitcase cancel your plane reservations anything no, imagine no. having to get through the day Pete and you turn up at the hotel and they go oh it's, your reservation has been cancelled and then Dynamite <laughs> Kid jumps out and just goes fucking laugh you cunt <laughs> Davy sits there by the pop pot going, the man, the man cannot get in room. <laughs> I can't get in room. <laughs> Davy sleep in front Thanks. of fire like dog. The bigger than us, the stronger than us, but we got the uh, speed, we got the agility, and plus we got seven years behind us as a tag team. So these two guys are strong, they'll do damage if we let them do damage. But we're not going to give them time to think, we're going to win the ring. From when that bell rings, we're going to be moving, we're going to be moving, we're going to go around, we're going to dance around them in circles. If, if possible, we're going to confuse them, and then what, they're going to make a mistake. If they make a mistake, don't get me wrong, we never underestimate any team. But when they make that mistake, we're going to beat them one, two, three. All right, we certainly look forward to that match. Should it, take- it all comes to a head one night where the Rougeos come back from their match and Mr. Perfect has just joined the WWF, Kurt mm. Hennig, and he's a notorious ribber. And Hennig starts looking over at Jacques Rougeau's workout bag, going, mm, mm, mm. and Jacques Rougeau goes through and he realises some of his clothes have gone missing. Sacre bleu! And he goes, this is Bulldogs. <laughs> this is Bulldogs. The Bulldog did this. A few weeks later... La Rose Beef did this. <laughs> um, <laughs> a few weeks later, it, they come back from another match and someone has put locks on their bag so they can't undo them. And there's just no keys. They're just padlocks. And again, Mr. Perfect is there. And Mr. Perfect seems to be the person who was doing this. <laughs> But he basically he's got, would, he's got a necklace with keys on it. <laughs> he would basically be sort of like signalling to the bag and going, oh, terrible. And Jack Rougeau just sort of goes, those dirty damn bulldogs. <laughs> anyway. It's like a fucking comic book. He gets fed up with it and he starts saying to the locker room, do you know what I'm going to do? I've had enough of the bulldogs. I'm going to tell Vince McMahon that they are doing this and it's really upset me. Yeah. So a couple of days later, again, he's playing cards, Jack Rougeau, sitting there. Dynamite Kid comes up from behind, smacks him over the head and starts beating him up really badly. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> He's all How about... can these people relax <laughs> with these unhinged monsters? You were, you was going to snitch. Mate, <laughs> you're beating me up because you were horrible to me. This is a place of work. So uh, it's it's awful. So Jack takes a really, really bad beating. <laughs> right. And uh, he's pulled off a dynamite kid by Raymond. And Raymond mm. is known as being... Uh, he's the other Rougeau. He's known as being a bit harder. Mm. So he's a golden gloves boxing background. Yeah. And, and Jack Rougeau is not known for being hard. Over the next couple of weeks, Raymond says, you know, this is you've got to do something about this you mm. can't just let this go because otherwise everyone will walk over you all the time yeah you can't let dynamite get away with it i know my brother took it very very bad he he, he got very deep inside himself and that you know it, it's a depressing situation it's like what do we do from here and uh, the next day i was talking to him and i said there has to be a receipt here now, one thing that they're worried about with Dynamite Kid is Dynamite Kid is the hardest and most frightening man that's ever lived. Yeah, it's hard to do a rib on a man who could pull you. He's basically Begbie from Train Spotting, except he's yeah. a Begbie who's incredibly strong, which is the, the <laughs> definition of a nightmare. Yes. So what happens is Raymond Rougeau and Jacques begin going, how do we get back to the Dynamite Kid? Ray Rougeau mm. talks about it later when he was a very well-respected French language commentator for the WWE, and they were more than happy for him to talk about times he committed assault on previous employees he said when Dynamite Kid attacked my brother in Miami I said to him there has to be a comeback fight with him I told him I'd watch his back and we set up the comeback in the day my, my father taught me to box when I was young my, my father was a golden glove champion he taught me to box he had me box with all the kids in the area and this and that when I was young he said I want to teach you how to defend yourself how to fight not to become a bully but if ever, you need, if ever need be you'll be able to take care of yourself which it came in handy a few times in my career. Uh, 
You agree, actually. Over the next kind of weeks or so, after the matches, Raymond and Jack go back to the hotel room and Raymond teaches Jack how to box. And they right. pull up the mattress from the bed and Jack just sits there pummeling it. And they train and train and train. <laughs> he speaks to his father, who's a former wrestler, and his father begins saying, look, if you're going to hit this guy, he needs to go down. Make sure you've got a roll of quarters in your hand. So everything is planned. And Jack wow. Rougeau spends two weeks. Every time Dynamite comes in, he looks really shamefaced and sort of nervous so that Dynamite doesn't have a clue as to what's going to happen. This is like Back to the Future. This is this is between SummerSlam and Survivor Series. Right. And what happens is Jacques Rougeau goes, right, I'm going to do it. And they see Dynamite coming out of the canteen. And Jacques Rougeau, he says something along the lines of, you know, did you have a nice meal? And as Dynamite goes, yeah, Jacques Rougeau punches him as hard as he can in the face with a roll of quarters. Right. Four of Dynamite's teeth go straight out. Nice. His face explodes in yes. a mist of blood. Dynamite doesn't go down. <laughs> no, 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 look, we all have these fantasies about how well fights go. I, I consistently yeah. have fantasies where I've never fought in my life that I punch a man and he goes down, but I have no plan for when he doesn't go down. No. Ray Rougeau starts shouting from the sidelines, give him a jab, jab him. <laughs> Jacques Rougeau hits him with his left hand then. Dynamite goes down to one knee and just begins pulling himself up on Jacques Rougeau's clothes. <laughs> this is like the worst oh, thing imaginable. No. The other guys who come out, there are a lot of Dynamite Kids friends like Bad News Brown, <laughs> and they grab Jacques Rougeau and they separate the two men. And Dynamite's in a terrible state. And the shit's hit the fan. Yeah. So Vince McMahon is in a position where he's sort of given them a warning before, saying, mm. I can see this is brewing. Mm. Be really careful. You know, yeah. I don't want to have to fire anyone. And they get to a position where, I don't know, there's something sort of old school about it, where people don't quite respect Jacques Rougeau, but what they do sort of realise, I think, as a sort of community, is they go, actually, Dynamite's a horrible bloke. Yeah. And he took advantage of Jacques Rougeau by beating him up when he wasn't ready for it. And he's a mean guy. He's made the honky-tonk man cry. Aww. He plays these horrible pranks and everything. And I think they sort of go, he slightly got what was his. Yeah. And what's funny is that even though Dynamite doesn't go down, for some reason, everything changes after that. And, I don't know, he gets bitter. He gets really bitter. And so Vince McMahon has said, it ends here. They go for a meeting. He says, obviously, you saw that things won't end there. He says, what? So, you hit him, they retaliated. You'll have the legs broken. Do you think they're just going to go home and say, okay, well, we're crippled now, we'll go home, and it's going to end like that? He says, what? Six months later, you'll come out of a restaurant with your wife and somebody will hit you in the back of the head with a baseball bat. Then what? You'll have somebody killed in their family. He says, this ends now. Jimmy Hart writes, not long after that, most of the boys were involved in a big battle royal. That The match was booked in a way that left the Dynamite Kid and Jacques Rougeau to face one another in the end. They were forced to work together and they both acted professionally. There were no more confrontations. That is absolutely not true. I don't know where Jimmy Hart got that story <laughs> about them being the last two men in a battle royal because it did not happen. Instead, what happened is that Dynamite Kid began harboring a grudge and working out how he would in turn get his violent and sickening revenge on the Rougeos. What he planned was that they were going to be in the <laughs> ring for the first time at the Survivor Series 1988 in this giant tag team match that involved 10 teams, so 20 men on each side. And what Dynamite Kid's plan was, was he would get into the ring with Jacques Rougeau and then he would try and kill him. That was that was basically the thing. <laughs> now, word had basically got back that Dynamite Kid was going to be planning something. So the Survivor <laughs> Series match was scripted so that the Rougeaus were the first team eliminated. I think uh, Raymond was pinned by Bret Hart in the opening minutes of the match. And then there was another 20 minutes before the British Bulldogs were actually eliminated. They stayed in the match much longer than you would have thought they would based on their booking. So there was a very clear determination. To keep by the apart, time the Bulldogs right? had been eliminated and Dynamite Kid had run back to the locker room, the Rougeaus <laughs> were already long gone from the building. Small package by the hitman. He got, he got it. it right in the centre. The Rougeaus are gone. And then the Bulldogs pretty much are out. There's all these different reasons. I think a lot of it was that Dynamite felt he'd lost a lot of face. And so they wanted to sort of, you know, move on. But the other reason was, I think, you know, this man wasn't really going to stop them. But I think he just come to that point where people were like, he is not really worth having around. Yeah, He's yeah. too mean a dude. Too volatile. Yeah, entirely. So they leave three months later. Um, oh. Jacques Rougeau, of course, goes on to become the Mountie, who we see in yes, the uh, early 90s. Um, he's also one of just 14 men 
in wrestling history who have ever pinned Hulk Hogan. Uh, oh, he uh, paid 10 grand for Hogan to come to a Montreal show that he put on oh, where he, he was able to beat him, which is, uh, <laughs> again, just 14 men. That's an amazing <laughs> list. The other ones are all real Hall of Famers. That yeah, you, yeah, you know, yeah. Your Andres, your Ultimate Warriors. Mm. Uh, after retiring, the Mountie actually tried to go to join the Montreal Police Department, but uh, he was unable to do so as he had not graduated high school. <laughs> <laughs> do you know who I am? Oh, you got it right. I am the Mountie. Every story about Dynamite Kid is unsettling. Unsettling. <laughs> He's got that kind of like, he looks like he could be the world's most dangerous bin yeah, man. He's got like that kind of, that. he could have a slick back completely hair, kind that. of waxy jacket from the 80s, That's just the, frightening, that frightening thing of, You know, you could put him in any room with any like weird murderers from all across the world. And if there was some machine you could like hook them up to, to see who'd bitten off the most noses, he'd always come out <laughs> the, the, the top. All the, how, many, how many fingers of, is each person broke? Oh, it's Dynamite Kid again. You know, sitting there just looking at all the others, just waiting for his chance to fucking bite them on the chin. <laughs> <laughs> what a frightening young man. I'd like all you people out there on TV land to know that I think it's round right about time. I'm not sure when, Ed. I think it's time for me to hang my boots up. I've got too many injuries. My back, my knees, my shoulder, different things. I think, well, I can't really set a date. But anyway, I'd like to dedicate these boots to a young man who I will believe, or I do believe, will be the superstar of the 90s. Ed, that's Chris Benoit. <laughs> 